Welcome to Testable Faith. I'm Hugh Ross, founder of Reasons to Believe, and I'm joined today by a friend I've known for almost four decades, and uh, that's the astronomer and mathematician from Witzwater Sand University in South Africa, uh, David Block. And I met you when you were barely 30 years of age, if I recall, and <laughs> here you <laughs> are. You've been with us several times. It's been a pleasure to minister yes. with you yes. over the past several decades. But one thing I know about you, David, and I saw this from the very first time I met you, mm. is how passionate you are about sharing with people who are not astronomers mm. about the incredible glory of God mm. revealed in the heavens. Mm. And we're talking more than just the glory of God. Can you kind of tell us, from your perspective, what do we see when we look up? Mm. Well, you know, Hugh, it all started off, I was 15 years old, I was in high school in South Africa in a tiny little town, Krugersdorp. And I remember my father had purchased this little four and a half inch reflector telescope and I had a peek at Saturn. And I saw Saturn with its glorious system of rings. And right there and then, long before I came to know the Lord, I fell in love with the creation, not only the creation, but the beauty of Saturn, the elegance, it's, it, the, the dynamics involved in Saturn with its rings. And then when I came to know the Lord, it all made so much more sense. In the heavens, Hugh, whether it be Saturn or moving along to, as you know, my the key theme of my research is cosmic dust, Pinch yourself, as I tell audiences around the world, you and I are made of carbon-based stardust. I see more than just scientific fact. I see a grand artist, if you like. You know, when I look at these myriads of nebulae and then galaxies, and I did my doctorate way back in 1980 in galaxy morphology, the shapes and the dynamics of galaxies, I see the artistic pen of the creator. The best way I can describe it is, for example, with Michelangelo. He would see a block of marble and he would want to free, free David from within the block of marble. And he'd chip away and eventually David is freed and we all behold that or we behold the Pieta. And it's just like the great Michelangelo here, the designer, the creator of the cosmos, uh, having fun, if you like, Hugh, with his palette. And I see design everywhere, you know, not only in terms of fine tunings, which we can discuss later, but just in terms of sheer symmetry. I love the morphological symmetries in galaxies, the Fourier modes, the harmonics, the dynamics. I see God's glory revealed in the most beautiful, from the most beautiful. Well, let me see if I can paraphrase this. Yes. I mean, your research study is looking at these giant interstellar clouds of gas and Correct. dust. And yeah, they're just gas and dust. Correct. But why are they so beautiful? All right. Why are they so colorful? Yes. And when we talk about galaxies, yes. I mean, our peers refer to these spiral galaxies as grand design galaxies. Mm -hmm. These are terms being coined by people who aren't even believers. Right. They see the design, that's the true. fine tuning, the that's beauty, true. the color. That's true. And, uh, I, and that's evident to everyone. Yes. I mean, you look up even without a telescope. That's right. You're awestruck. That's right. I love that word, Hugh, awe. Um, I look at the universe not only with a scientific eye, but an eye and a neurophysiological mindset uh, filled with awe uh, and wonder. I see so much more than just science. I love the way you brought up the, the term grand design galaxies. Um, I've studied these grand design galaxies for about 30 to 40 years. I've studied their dust lanes, but some the lanes of cosmic dust, but somehow I see far more than uh, the music being played, if you like. Uh, I see the hand of the master pianist, 
behind it all. And I've always been like this. I still feel as if I'm a little boy, perhaps 10 years old, playing with his box of toys. In my case, the toys being galaxies and the galaxies containing the pillars of cosmic dust. But I see such harmony in the universe. Now, David, I heard you use the words beauty and uh, mm. symmetry. I mm. mean, we think of the word elegance. Mm. And the fact that somehow we human beings can appreciate those things. Yes. And the animals don't, but we do. Yes, very important. We have this sudden you know, instance that we really appreciate this. Mm. What does that tell us about God? Mm. Well, imago Dei, we are made, we are created in the image of our creator. And that to me is wonderful because we can ascertain the beauty of the Pieta, or again, the beauty of Michelangelo's David, or again, the beauty of say NGC 3031 Messier 81. We can stand away from it all and discern many characteristics you all beauty, wonder, elegance, art, and much besides. And even our atheist peers would agree with us that they see this beauty and oh, elegance yes. and symmetry. Yes. And you quoted Psalm 19, that yes. heavens declare the glory of God. Yes. And that's repeated throughout the Old Testament. Yes. Many places it talks about yes. the glory of God revealed. Yes. And then you have in Psalm 97 that the heavens reveal the righteousness of God. Yes. And we've got Romans 1 that says that we're all without excuse because the creation reveals not only God, mm. but God's attributes. Mm. Can you describe for us what attributes you see revealed in the heavens and how this identifies the God of the Bible mm. as opposed to the other supposed gods? Certainly. I think first and foremost, what springs to mind, my Jewish mind, bearing in mind that I'm you know, raised as an Orthodox Jew, is the concept of love. I think of 1 Corinthians 13, of course, and the supreme revelation of love at the cross. But God being love, loves to create. So, of course, the jewel of his creation is you and I. We are the crown, the pinnacle of his creation. But if an artist is born and they love to do what they do, they do it with enthusiasm, Hugh. They do it with passion. They do it with purpose. They do it with vision. They do it with imagination because they love to do what they are doing. Yehudi Menuhin adores playing the violin. And so he excels at it because that's his passion. And God in his love creates the wonderful universe that I see. So you see the passion of the creator Absolutely. in the universe. Absolutely. Uh, you see his love. Absolutely. I mean, when I look at the heavens and realize all that has to be there for me to exist. Absolutely so. Doesn't that give us a measure of how much that God loves us? Absolutely so. Two trillion galaxies wasn't too expensive <laughs> to make a home for us. No, and it wasn't too expensive just in terms of the beginning. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. And there's the, you know, the, the, the radiation dominated epoch. And then the matter dominated epoch. Nothing is too much for the creator. But I can just see the Trinity at the beginning in John 1, um, you know, the creation of the cosmos, and it's all done in love, and at the, the, the pinnacle of the dream, if you like, the pinnacle of his dream is Imago Dei, let us now make man in our image. It's an extraordinary story, Hugh, is it not? Spanning around 14, 13, 14 billion years. It's an extraordinary story of love, of passion, but of design, but of purpose. And the veritable hairs on our head are numbered, which I think is extraordinary. Now, I heard you say that you're this young boy with this four and a half inch telescope yes. looking at Saturn. Can you give us a little bit of your story of how before you became a Christian, being exposed to what you were seeing through the telescope, your studies in astronomy, mm -hmm. what role did that play in you coming to faith in Jesus Christ? It's a beautiful question. It played the greatest of roles, Hugh, because when I looked at Saturn, I said to myself, there has to be a living God, if you like. There has to be a creator there. 
You see, I was raised as an Orthodox Jew. I would hear the rabbis speak great sermons, how God spoke to Abraham, to Isaac, to Jacob, and to multitudes more. But to me, David Block in Krugersdorp, God was dead. It wasn't alive. It was myth. It was tradition. It was a wonderful story, God speaking to Moses and so forth. But when I was at my telescope, you looking at Saturn in particular, there was something within me saying, but God must still exist. Wow. God must still be alive. There must still be a God out there who speaks to mankind much this, in much in the same way as he spoke to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And so in the deepest sense of the word, Hugh, uh, the, the telescopic observations using my four-and-a-half-inch telescope played the greatest role in igniting the flame which eventually led me to coming to faith in Jesus. Well, thank you, David. And I want to share with all of you that we have a lot of resources from David that you can watch uh, at our YouTube channel. Uh, Testable Faith is where you go that you can see this. You're going to be able to hear a little more about David's story and, uh, and also the resources that you can access that have been written uh, by David. So thank you. Thank you.